and a yorker bowl him the batsman is gone for a duck now how often have we heard these terminologies coming out of the commentators we also often use such terms while discussing cricket without ever realizing meaning of where the terms have come from welcome to episode 9 of cricket unadulterated my name is atish am and i am glad to present you with our ninth episode and i would like to welcome manjeet and abhishek as well hi atish am and hello to all our listeners i think uh, today's episode will be highly informative for you all because uh, we have been listening to these various cricket terms ever since we started following cricket but hardly do we pause to take into consideration how these terms evolved over the years and how did they enter the cricketing vocabulary so i am really happy to discuss all these things with you all today hello everyone uh, i'm pretty excited to be on episode 9 of this podcast cricket unadulterated and yes manjit you rightly said uh, often these terms are just used in cricket but we never knew what was the cricketing history of these terms and how they came into our cricket vocabulary yes abhishek and it would be very silly of us for not starting the discussion by considering the silly fielding positions i think we should start by discussing those positions and yes i always used to wonder when i was a child uh, that do they really mean uh, silly in terms of positions but when we were uh, researching on this topic it actually was the reason why these fielding positions were called as silly point or silly bit off so that was quite an interesting uh, finding for me yes uh, usually when you are uh, away from the batsman or close to the boundary there is a little risk of you getting injured by the ball because uh, first of all the ball uh, has a distance to travel uh, to reach the fielder but when uh, fielder is standing really close to the batsman in anticipation of a catch or uh, maybe even a run out chance uh, there is a very much a risk of the ball hitting the batsman uh, as soon as it leaves the bat and uh, of course there have been several injuries to players who are Uh, in close catching positions uh, that are, that are around the batsman particularly in test matches when uh, the fielding captain tends to set a very aggressive and attacking fielding so that's the reason those fielding positions are called silly because um, actually there is a lot of risk involved uh, of the player getting injured and more often than not uh, i think youngsters who are making their debut or just coming into the team have to bear the brunt and uh, standing that particular tough position uh, because uh, we have seen many experienced cricketers who have done that job but uh, uh, we are seeing the trend that uh, it is most basically the youngsters with quick reflexes standing in those positions yes abhishek you rightly pointed that out and players like cheteshwar pujara who are now experienced in the team when they came into the team they used to field at those silly positions very close to the batsman now we've talked about silly mid off silly point as positions now i would like to point out the fielding position which is referred to as point through which silly point comes as a later terminology but uh, there's also a fact and a history behind why the position is called point so would you like to talk about it yes uh, because uh, if you look at the position uh, at the sham uh, the point position is usually 45 degrees uh, on the off side of, of the batsman and 45 degrees so mostly if you look at it technically so the ball it comes of the point of the bat that's why the position is referred to as point position and the derivatives of point are termed as backward point and then we have silly point and point and great fielders or very agile fielders of a team field in these position because these are very important positions now apart from point uh, which is uh, named uh, as per the angles in cricket there's also a position which is named or termed as per the angles involved i believe and i think that is slip 
the position of leg slip or a normal slip so again would you like to talk about that yes uh, so if you look at the slip position uh, in cricket the fielders it is usually when the ball uh, comes off the edge of the bat and the ball is literally slipping away and that's when slip position comes into picture Yes, because the slip positions are not too far from the uh, wicket keeper, and uh, there is little running or uh, covering the ground involved. Uh, usually, the top order batsmen are placed in the slip positions, and of course, it's really important to have uh, quick reflexes and good uh, catching skills because uh, the ball comes at a very high pace, and uh, of course, the wicket keeper has the privilege of wearing gloves. but uh, the slip pos- the slip fielders aren't supposed to be wearing those so uh, you really have to uh, hold on to the ball so players with quick reflexes and uh, agile fielding skills are placed in these positions for one example is rahul dravid who was brilliant at slip and if you look at the current players ajinkya rahane is one good example as well and uh, manjit not just quick reflexes uh, these uh, fielders have got to have huge amount of concentration because uh, test cricket is very tough because often uh, in test cricket the uh, slip position is very important uh, you field for 89 overs and suddenly a chance comes to you 90th over and if you are not alert and not concentrating enough you may just uh, drop that catch and eventually uh, an important position in the match exactly both of you have pointed out that high level of concentration skills and good catching ability is required in slip position but now just behind the slips or you can say just to the far side of the slip there is a position we call it as third man and recently or if you watch cricket very closely over the decades tired legs are placed in that position but third man has also been derived due to some reasons and uh, i think we should talk about how the name came into being and so the fielding position so again this position uh, is derived uh, because of it's very self explanatory third man because in earlier days uh, they used to play timeless matches uh, or test matches later on and uh, when the cricket originated captains were often aggressive and used to uh, deploy most of their fielders inside the ring so there used to be just two fielders outside the 30 yard circle and uh, even if there is a closed slip cordon uh, there are chances that uh, the ball can uh, fall between the two slip fielders and can run to the boundary so this position was used later on and he was called as third man because there were two fielders already standing on the boundary and he became literally the third man now third man is the position especially in test matches where batsmen dab it towards the man placed there and get a single now come to fast paced odi or t20 cricket and exactly 180 degree opposite to that position is the cow corner in which the batsmen slog to get more runs as many as they could now cow corner is also a very old terminology of cricket and we would like to discuss about that so there is a story that is often circulated uh, that there was this particular cricketing ground uh, where uh, none of the teams would score much runs in that particular area and there was was little to no action in that particular area of the field so that's when the cows found it uh, convenient to graze in that particular area because there were hardly any fielders running towards you nor were there any shots being played or catches being offered in that particular uh, sector so that's one reason this particular area was called cow corner because the cattle would just uh, have their leisure grazing there and you can't imagine uh, cattle grazing freely on the grounds these days because the kind of shots players are uh, using to score runs uh, they are pretty much under a lot of danger because uh, if you look at the unorthodox cricket shots being played these days most of the times the ball ends up landing in that position cow corner and it's such a critical position with the advent of t20 cricket and t10 cricket yes batsmen close their eyes frequently while in the death towers and they slog the ball and more often than not it lands in the cow corner so yes 
it's a busy place when you talk about modern cricket so guys uh, so far we have talked about the various fielding positions uh, now let's take a look at the shots that are played to uh, hit the ball towards these positions so i would like to start with dil scoop uh, of course we all know it's named after tilak ratne dilshan and uh, he used it to a great effect during the 2009 world t20 uh, when sri lanka managed to reach the final but ultimately lost to pakistan so of course we have seen various forms of the scoop shot being played but uh, this one was particularly innovative uh, and dilshan as i said he used it to a great extent throughout his career yes manjeet and variations and versions of this shot have come out over the years and in general you can refer to these shots as ram shots but uh, dilshan kind of invented this kind of a shot or this kind of batting technique and this i think goes out as a tribute to dilshan by naming the shot as dil scoop i think uh, at the sham uh... i think uh, it was douglas mariller uh, although dilshan has perfected this shot uh, mariller was the one uh, who used to play this kind of shot the ramp over wicket keeper for all those listeners who are not aware who douglas mariller is he was a zimbabwe cricketer and uh, this is similar to the one which we are discussing now so it is ramp shot uh, usually played between wicket keeper and fine leg Yes, there are different versions of this scoop now. Most often than not, uh, it is very innovative and inventive because you can't place fielders between wicket keeper and fine leg. It is used in T20 for scoring a lot of runs. Yes, and for that matter, even Sachin Tendulkar used to glide the ball over the keepers, but he used to do it with the straight bat sitting down. So that was a kind of shot in itself. But yes, as you clearly pointed out, ram shot. is being used very frequently in cricket nowadays now if we talk about uh, innovative shots uh, since we are on that subject uh, guys uh, one more innovative and often this falls into the debate of batsmen having unfair advantage is the switch hit uh, and kevin peterson was the pioneer of this shot so i think we can talk about this shot guys Yes, Kevin Peterson, as we all know, has been a legendary batsman for England in the past decade, and he did this and played this kind of a shot against a bowler like Muthaya Murli Dharan. So yes, kudos to him for coming out with such an innovative shot, and he was very successful in playing this. And many players over the years have replicated this kind of shot. Uh, a famous example being. the likes of ab de villiers he has also tried his hand at playing this shot and has been successful in doing so as well as some other batsmen as well so yes this is also a shot that is being used more frequently in cricket nowadays so guys uh, do you think uh, the batsmen should be allowed to play this shot because uh, if we talk about right handed batsmen and uh, the batsman is changing the stance at the last minute at the last second and going left handed to hit the ball and clearly i think it's a disadvantage to the bowling side because the bowling side has uh, used fielders according to what they feel is a right handed batsman and it is not just the fact that the batsman flocks it while changing his hand you look at the likes of david warner he plays a proper right handed shot even when he is a left handed batsman by changing his stance so I think it's a bit unfair for the bowlers, but this is how the game has evolved over the years. It has become more batsman friendly. So we have discussed some of the shots that have uh, unique names. So let's now take a look at uh, bowling deliveries that have some unique names as well. So first of all, let us talk about uh, an illegal bowling delivery to begin with. Uh, yes, I'm talking about the beamer, which is a, a fast-paced delivery by a pace bowler, which is usually above waist height of the batsman, and uh, this is uh, considered unfair and intimidatory uh, on the bowler's part. And uh, bowling a beamer on the first occasion invites an official warning from the umpire, and uh, bowling a beamer on the second occasion uh, results in the bowler being dismissed from bowling in that innings. 
and uh, of course though, there's are no balls as well yes manjeet and when the concept of free hit was introduced it was only for the front foot no ball initially and uh, over the years umpires and cricketing fraternity has realized that bowling a beamer also comes closer to what you can say a criminal offense by a bowler and free hit awarded on a beamer has been a revolutionary addition to the concept of free hit so one explanation that this kind of delivery has been so named is that um, of course when you talk about a beam of light it comes just flashing at you and you have very little time to react so again when you are a batsman who is facing a fast bowler and the bowler balls you a beamer you have very little time to respond and it just comes right at you and uh, it has full potential to injure the batsman because it goes without pitching and above waist height so the batsman can be seriously injured in the chest region or even at the head so this is this could be one explanation why beamers are so called now let's talk about uh, the complete opposite of beamer yorker and uh, lasit malinga jasprit bumrah nowadays mitchell stark with those to crushing yorkers are hogging all the limelight with bowling that kind of delivery so let's try to find out why yorker is called yorker so guys you have any explanation well abhishek as far as we know the explanation that is available by the experts is that york means being shrewd or sharp and definitely the bowlers who execute such a delivery are very shrewd to ball such beautifully and right at the toes of the batsman and uh, another thing about yorkers is that uh, the bowler needs to be very precise uh, regarding the length of the ball because uh, many a times it happens that a bowler while attempting to bowl a yorker ends up giving the batsman a juicy full toss which the batsman can hit literally anywhere so there is another thing that concerns yorkers is that uh, they need to be in point and accurate yes now that we are talking about fast bowlers there's another term and another delivery that is very specific to such kind of bowlers i am talking about bumper now it sounds very close to what beamer is but it is completely opposite of what it is now a bumper is when a bowler bowls a short delivery aimed right at the head of the batsman so the difference uh, would be the ball is pitching in bumper but in beamer it comes directly at you without ball pitching right yes but the point here is both the deliveries are very scary for a batsman to face when a fast bowler is bowling at a very high pace and another difference between bumper and beamer is that beamer is an illegal delivery and bowling two beamers can get you out of the attack and uh, the bowler must be replaced by another one while uh, because there are restrictions on short deliveries a bowler of course cannot ball a number of uh, bumpers as he likes but because there is a limit on bowling short pitch deliveries depending on the format of the game the bowler is legally entitled to bowl a limited number of bumpers talking about the etymology of bumper it is a old fashioned term used for a bouncer now bump in bumper stands for the ball sponging of the pitch that is creating a bump out of the pitch hence it was initially named as a bumper we also call it a bouncer so we have talked about the fast bowlers and uh, fast bowling terminologies now now let's switch to spinners and uh, we have some interesting terms in uh, in spin department as well like googly or uh, dusra tisra even tisra nowadays Yes now talking about dusra it was invented very recently by saklen mushtaq it is the other delivery or the ball that spins away from a normal delivery that a off spinner balls and accordingly googly is a ball bowled by a leg spinner that goes the other way from the natural delivery that comes out of the hand of a leg spinner now talking about these deliveries there was also a delivery named as flipper which was bowled by the great shane one once while he was playing 
it is also a type of a straighter ball that a leg spinner balls but the variation here was he used to swipe his fingers so that the pace changes rapidly after the ball is pitched there is this one indoor game that we all must have played particularly in our childhoods at some point of time of course i'm talking about carrom and uh, of course there are uh, various discs that, that you need to uh, aim into pockets so if you remember the uh, spring action that you produced with your fingers before you strike a particular disc imagine if that same is used in cricket yes i'm talking about the carrom ball and uh, ravichandran ashwin is a master at it in fact uh, most of his deliveries come off carrom balls and uh, it's very difficult to pick as well so it's no surprise that uh, when a spinner uses his fingers in a carrom like striking action the ball is of course called a carrom ball and in fact uh, you talked about ravichandran ashwin uh, it was the sri lankan off spinner ajanta mendes uh, when he troubled the indian batsmen in india tour of sri lanka in 2009 10 tour many batsmen completely struggled to pick that ball uh, manjit yes abhishek you talked about ajanta mendes and his carrom ball he was through his carrom ball referred to as a mystery spinner there's also a mystery that surrounds the game of cricket which does not involve the players i am talking about test matches and the role of umpires at the end of a day's play where umpires offer the light to the batsmen and as we all see on the television batsmen take the lights and they walk away now i think we should discuss about what it is all about what offering of light means and how it is relevant in test cricket so uh, mostly cricket is played either in summer season or uh, winter season and uh, if we talk about the winter season in india uh, it usually is the time between december and february and uh, that's when usually test cricket is played in india at 3 or 4 pm uh, generally the light starts to fade out especially on venues uh, in the northern part of the country Similarly, in other parts of the world, uh, depending on the time zone in which you are in, there's huge impact of light deteriorating light on the batsman, and uh, more most often than not, uh, umpires have to come into picture here and take out their light meters and uh, check if the light conditions are favorable and uh, perfectly all right and safe for the batsman. So now that we have talked about offering the light, which uh, which is an event that happens at the end of a particular day. So, if you are a batting side who has lost a couple of wickets and uh, you are looking forward uh, to continuing your batting on the next day as well, and uh, if you want to retain your well-set or uh, recognized batsman for the later part of the next day, then you send a batsman who usually bats lower down the order just to uh, stick out there and uh, play out all the overs until uh, the day has been called. So, of course, as you all must be knowing, this particular batsman. Who, who is usually a tail ender with some defensive skills who is sent uh, to bat out towards the end of a day is called a night watchman and uh, a night watchman is usually a tail ender and what is a tail ender we'll discuss further it's interesting that uh, we think that night watchman are basically used to protect the uh, incoming batsman uh, and uh, recognize batsman as you rightly said manjeet uh, but in 2006 uh, so a certain player came out as a night watchman and slammed a double century jason gillespie yes and uh, this uh, double century by jason gillespie came against bangladesh at chittagong and uh, this feat was unusual because uh, hardly anyone expects a tail ender to score a double century let alone when that particular batsman is sent up as a night watchman yes manjeet you rightly pointed out that no one expects a night watchman to score runs or get a big 100 or a double 100 for that matter now as we all know being indian cricket fans that rohit sharma is a recent test opener and he has just got his opportunities and has done well so in one of the interviews he was questioned by the interviewer who happened to be an opening batsman himself that is tamim iqbal and he asked rohit sharma that whether a opener should be given the liberty of having a night watchman batting for him to that question rohit sharma's reply was that if a night watchman goes for one of the opening batsmen the other opening batsman 
would question why he has not been given the opportunity and if a team sends both the batsmen as night watchmen then you're talking about trouble and early wickets in fact uh, having two night watchmen batting together just beats the purpose of having a night watchman in the first place exactly you you want to save your settled and established batsmen and not to lose wickets so i think you have the point there and rohit sharma had his point as well so now that we've discussed about night watchman let's talk about why a tail ender comes out as a night watchman and what a tail ender is all about so you can consider the batting order of a cricket team as a complete snake formation and an openers can be termed as the mouth of the innings but the players who finish the batting lineup when the innings is rolled over those are called as tail enders as far as cricket terminology is concerned and tail enders hence are referred to the batsmen batting at positions 8 9 10 and 11 specifically it is very rare for a tail ender to uh, score big runs but then there have been instances when uh, tail enders whether batting at lower positions or at night watchmen have scored uh, runs sometimes uh, even more than the top order batsman i was reading this very interesting trivia about uh, the tail ender the position 11 when the batsman comes out to bat at 11 and it sometimes referred to as last man jack as uh, you would uh, say that in a pack of cards 9 10 followed by a jack so that position is called as last man jack sometimes so as you all have must guessed by now that the number 11 batsman is generally the weakest in the team who has little uh, batting skills but then uh, there are some batsmen or there are of course more bowlers but then who used to come in at number 11 who were so uh, less talented as far as batting is concerned that the legendary commentator harsha bhogle once mentioned speaking of an indian tail ender that uh, if you are to create a team of number 11 from all the teams then narendra hirwani would still bat at number 11 so we talked about fast bowlers we've talked about uh, different terminologies of fast bowling and spin bowling now let's talk about the term which is used when a batsman gets out at the lowest possible score which is zero and yes we are talking about duck for batsmen playing the game of cricket this has to be the most infamous term you talked rightly about duck being a score of zero for the batsman now there are three other substitutes of the term duck i would like to talk about them the first being the golden duck now golden duck is referred to when a batsman gets out of his very first ball there's diamond duck diamond duck is when a batsman is dismissed without ever facing a ball then we have royal duck now royal duck is reserved for openers it is when an opening batsman gets out of the first ball of an incumbent innings that that means he has been given out for a royal duck the term duck came into being in the late 19th century i am talking about the year 1866 when the prince of wales played cricket and was dismissed for a not from then on this term of getting out on a not or a zero is referred to as a duck so of course it's a terrible feeling for a batsman to get uh, or dismissed on a duck but imagine getting dismissed on a duck twice in a test innings that's when you have earned a pair and uh, it's a quite uh, a suitable name for such a phenomenon because uh, a two scores of zero when written next to each other they look like a pair of spectacles so when a batsman is dismissed on a duck uh, in both the innings of a test match he has earned a pair for himself yes manjeet you talked about a terrible feeling of getting out on a duck but what's more terrible and horrifying for an opening batsman or for any batsman is getting out on the first ball of his innings so if a batsman gets out on the first ball in a test match in both the innings then uh, it is called as king pair so a famous example of a batsman earning a king pair is adam gilchrist during the 2001 kolkata test 
he was dismissed lbw in both the innings he played uh, in the first innings he was uh, given leg before of the bowling of harbhajan singh and in the second innings uh, sachin tendulkar trapped him in front of the wickets in fact uh, guys if you remember when we hosted a cricket quiz a uh, few years back we asked a very interesting question to the teams on stage that uh, what was the nickname of mark bob and uh, there was a very interesting reason behind that uh, nickname yes of course uh, during 1992 series against sri lanka mark bob scored four ducks in a row so if you write his scores down it would look like four zeros and it very strikingly resembles the logo of the famous uh, motor brand audi so uh, this is one nickname that um, of course he wouldn't have loved to ha- have but then he earned it for himself in fact had he got a fifth duck in a row he would have been called an olympian so guys we've talked about scoring a duck and being on a pair and having this miserable thing being a batsman in any form of cricket now imagine being coming out to bat on the score of 111 that is nelson and then getting out and the commentators blaming it on the score guys here i am talking about the term nelson that is the score of triple one in cricket yes and uh, there is this thing with numbers and superstitions so there is uh, in christianity you have 666 which is called the devil's number you have unlucky 13 in australian cricket the unlucky number is 87 because it is 100 minus the unlucky 13 and uh, when you are on the field of play the score of 111 is also considered a superstition if you remember the umpire david shefford so whenever the score red 111 he used to just wobble or shake his legs or just uh, do some kind of a little dance as we can call it so of course there is this number which is associated with a very famous superstition yes manjeet and you talked about the umpire david shepherd now there's one of his famous interviews he did after his retirement in which he mentioned the term nelson as one arm one eye and one lump of sugar in his tea so yes he was very fascinated by that term now the reason why it is called as nelson the number 111 is because uh, admiral nelson had just one eye one arm and one leg near the end of his life so these are just speculations uh, and some reports say and completely rubbish this is speculation now when we are talking about special terminologies that are used in cricket we can't get past without discussing the term ashes that is the most famous test series that is held between england and australia and followed worldwide so i think we should also talk about how the term came into being and the rivalry that developed after it. right so there was this test match uh, between england and australia that took place at the oval in 1882 and that's when australia defeated england by a narrow margin and uh, australia used to be a colony of england back then and uh, the sentiments of the english uh, fans and public were deeply hurt because uh, the the cricket team from their colony actually came on uh, in english soil and uh, defeated them so one of the newspapers uh, published an obituary of english cricket that uh, they tried to suggest that english cricket is no more because it has fallen to such a low standard so they printed an obituary which read something like this in affectionate remembrance of english cricket which died at the oval on 29th august 1882 deeply lamented by a large circle of sorrowing friends and acquaintances and then there was a note at the bottom which said the body will be cremated and the ashes taken to australia so the ashes uh, uh, actually originated from this particular obituary and uh, it's uh, it tried to suggest that english cricket is no more and uh, that the ashes will be taken to australia so, so this is one reason why when england wins an ashes series it is said that the englishmen have regained the ashes because what was once their property was taken to australia and by winning the ashes they had uh, they now have it them back in their custody so this is when uh, it is said that england have regained the ashes 
So guys, it was a very fascinating discussion because uh, when we were preparing for this podcast and I'm pretty sure we knew about some of the terms, but I never knew what the Yorker actually meant. And it was, sometimes it happens that uh, these terms are used so often, but we forget to look at the etymology of that word. So it was quite a great discussion. Uh, so guys, I hope you liked and enjoyed this episode of our podcast. So uh, if you think that we missed uh, some of the other cricketing terms uh, in this discussion and uh, how the term originated in cricket, and if you would like to share that with us, please write in comment section and uh, do subscribe to our channel on different streaming platforms. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.